Attack on Titan is an anime that comes once in a lifetime. Whether you were there for the story, the characters, the action, the animation, or even the music, there was something there that caught everyone's attention. That's why the anime's ending is such a big deal. We've been waiting for this ending for years, and it's bittersweet. It truly feels like there will never be an anime like this again. That, of course, is not true, because just as there were anime like it before it was created, there will also be anime like it afterward, too. But until we find those anime, we'll anguish in a world without our favorite titans. But at least we can be glad that the series was capable of reaching its conclusion, which many other shows are never lucky enough to do. And so, to celebrate such a wonderful series, and to see it off in a way that honors it, we are going to cover the entire timeline of the Attack on Titan world, so sit right back and let's get into it. Before we start, we need to understand that Attack on Titan does not use the same calendar that we do. The Fall of Shiganshina, for instance, took place in the year 845. Since they don't seem to go by the year of our lord as we do, we need to give them a new way of measuring the things that happened, say 2000 years ago. In such cases, we're going to use BSC, which stands for Before Standard Calendar. So now that we've explained that, I think we're ready to start. Time Immemorial BSC. The first form of living matter comes into existence. It appears as a hallucinogenia type creature. There seem to be many of them, but as time passed, they apparently reached a point of near extinction. Only one is shown to survive. It made its home under a tree in what is known as modern day Marley. There, it awaited a certain little girl who would use its power to turn the whole world on its head. Unknown point in time to 1003 BSC, the Eldian Empire begins to come into power. In a small village somewhere in modern day Marley, a young girl named Amir gathers water in her pail as she watches the horseback riders coming in with the heads of the village's warriors on pikes. The king takes command of the village and enslaves all who live within, removing the tongues of many. During this time, Ymir is stationed as a feeder of the pigs, in which she accidentally opens the gate and allows one to escape. The pig is later found dead, and the king demands to know who it was who did it, threatening to remove an eye from everyone there if they refuse to tell. They all pin it on Ymir. As punishment, he frees her from being a slave and instead turns her into prey for a mock fox hunt. They give her a head start and begin to chase her down, firing arrows into her in attempts to kill her. Wounded and bloody, she makes her way into a massive hollowed out tree where she accidentally falls into an underground aquifer, where she comes into contact with a strange hallucinogenia that merges with her spine. In exchange for becoming host to it, it grants her full control over her form, which she instinctively uses to take the form of a massive creature of, and don't quote me on this, about 250 meters. This thing is witnessed by the hunters. Amir, with this new power, instead of being free, decides to go back to the Eldians and offer her new powers to the king in exchange for becoming his personal servant. He accepts. 995 BSC. Amir continues to work as King Fritz's right hand, where she squashes his enemies, builds his bridges, paves his roads, and even marries him and begets him children. Despite having married her, his lecherous nature remains as she is left to care for her children and to pine for the man who sees her as no more than a weapon. Together, they bear three daughters. Their names are Sina, Rose, and Maria. 990 BSC to the year 370 BSC. King Fritz sits upon his throne looking over his soldiers when one recruited from a fallen kingdom stands and throws his spear at the king. Without a moment's hesitation, Amir throws herself in front of the king and takes the shot. The king commands her to get up and heal, stating that he knows she can regenerate. However, the tired Amir instead chooses to succumb to her injuries. As a result, the king, unwilling to lose the power of the titans, has Amir's body butchered and force-fed to his three daughters, who each inherit titan powers, giving birth to the additional eight titans besides the founding titan. Ymir also at this time begins existing in the extra-dimensional plane known as the Paths, where she witnesses a tree of light sprout three branches, signifying that three more titans are born. From here, she works tirelessly to build them bodies upon command, remaining a slave to King Fritz even in death. The daughters of the king bequeath their titans to their own heirs 13 years after inheriting them due to the curse their mother put on titans that indicate that anyone bearing their powers will die 13 years after inheriting them, the same number of years she lived before dying saving the king. The Fritz family would maintain control of the founder but would later bequeath the remaining eight to noble families bearing Amir's blood. 
At some point in time, though, the families each begin to wage war, trying to take the Titans from the other noble families, creating an all-out battle royale within the government which the Fritz family manages to stop due to the power of the founding Titans. The Ackerman clan are later born to become the sword and shield of the Fritz family and are specifically altered to be unable to be affected by the founding Titans' powers. The fall of Lago supposedly happens prior to the Great Titan War, with the Titans ravaging Lago, Vale, and Monty in three battles of extraordinary inhumanity. This, however, is fabricated history and is used as propaganda to both force guilt upon remaining Eldians, as well as turn the opinion of Marleans against the Eldians. Current Era Year 240 A pandemic sweeps across the world, causing many, many casualties. However, the King of Eldia uses the power of the Founding Titan to make all Eldians immune to the disease, which results in not a single Eldian dying from the sickness. This causes Eldian numbers to skyrocket as the rest of the world takes the brunt of the pandemic. When the world rebalances, the ratio of Eldian to non-Eldian has become far closer than previous. Year 700 to 780 The nation of Hizudu allies with Eldia, however, Karl Fritz soon inherits the Founding Titan. Disgusted by the bloody history on which Eldia was built, he denounces his nation and its usage of titans and conspires with the Tiber family to begin a war with which the founding titan will appear to be overthrown. They concoct the story of the Marley and Helos and wage war in which the founding titan and many of his loyal subjects flee across the sea to an island he names his new paradise, a place he hopes to enjoy until the world's justice catches up with the Eldian sins and destroys them. He invites many of Hizuru's Shogun clan to join them, forming the Asian clan with which Mikasa is born. Many of the Eldians outside of the loop decide to stay in Eldia where they wage war. With the founding titan gone, infighting begins to occur in the Eldian government which the Marleans take as an opportunity to free themselves. As the eight houses fight each other, Marley unites under the banner of the Tiber family's Warhammer Titan and begins to take down the other houses and slowly grant the powers to the Marleans who take up the power of the Titans to further defeat Eldia. They manage to take all eight Titans and bring an official end to the Eldian Empire, sweeping across the continent, returning the glory of Marley. Elsewhere on Paradise, King Fritz decides to form a massive fortress in which all Eldians will live and thus takes some of the Eldians and turns them into colossal titans that he commands to harden into the walls Maria, Rose, and Cena. He further creates pure titans outside of the walls to stand as sentinels against any invading forces. He issues a decree to the world to lie in wait. Should there be any attempt to destroy the peace he's built on Paradise Island, he will unleash his wall titans on the world in a massive rumbling and destroy everyone. This, of course, is an empty threat meant to buy time. Hizuru would then take a hit in status due to Eldia going belly up. King Karl Fritz then renounces all war and binds the power of the founding titan by this oath, to which no future inheritors may use it for war ever again. Only the Fritz family and Marley and the Tiber family know of this secret oath. After this, Karl Fritz uses the power of the founder to wipe the memories of all Eldians on paradise, and puts forward a false history that the world beyond the walls was destroyed by the titans. The only groups within Paradise not affected are the Royal Bloodline, who inherit the memories of the Founder, the Ackerman Clan, who were augmented by the Founder to be immune to its influence, and the Asian Clan, who were not of Eldian blood at all. Karl Fritz grants noble status to the Ackerman Clan and Asian Clan in exchange for their silence, but it doesn't take, and the royal family has both clans hunted down and exterminated. The Marleans begin to study Titan biology and come to learn that the founding Titan connects all Titans via the paths, which are invisible to the naked eye, and that these paths converge on the founding Titan. Thus, the Marleans codename the founder as Coordinate. 780 to 785. The rise of the Eldian Restorationists begins, with a cult dedicated to the founder Emir. They take a little girl off the streets and name her Emir and call her the new incarnation of the founder. The little girl is treated like a princess until Marley breaks them up. Everyone blames it all on Ymir, and in return for her crimes, she's then taken to paradise where she's turned into a pure titan by the Marleans and set to roam the island for all eternity as a titan. 806 to 835. Grisha Jaeger is born in an Eldian internment camp and is soon followed by his little sister Faye. Together they wander out of the internment zone to witness an airship's return and are found by two Marleyan officers, one of which is Eren Kruger. 
Kruger's partner volunteers to take Faye home while Kruger decides to deal with Grisha personally. Asking whether he would rather work in the mines to pay off his debt to society or just get a brutal beating, Grisha chooses the beating and receives what he asks for. Kruger then tells him to wait and watch the airship since he traveled so far and just got beat up to see them. So Grisha does, but returning home, he's horrified to hear that Faye was killed, mauled to death by Marley and guard dogs. Grisha's parents blame him for the incident. Kruger would then go on to inherit the Attack Titan and become known as the Eldian Restorationist, the Owl. Grisha Jaeger, disillusioned with Marley in society since the murder of his sister, joins the Eldian Restorationists. During this time, he meets Dina Fritz, the last surviving pure-blooded royal in Eldia, and the two marry and bear a son that they name Ezekiel. Alright, the name might be headcanon, but Zeke is generally short for Ezekiel, and I like that name. On Paradise, Erwin Smith's father becomes a school teacher to which his son attends the school. Smith's father puts forward a theory in secret that the history of the world doesn't make sense sometimes and may be fabricated by the government to hide the truth. Erwin naively tells his friends who tell their parents. Word gets around and the government takes away Smith's father. Erwin never sees his father again. In this same span of time, Frida Reese is born and Tom Xarver inherits the Beast Titan. The same year Xyver inherits the Beast, 829 to be exact, Uriris inherits the Founding Titan from his father. Kenny Ackerman, one of the few surviving Ackerman clansmen, learns of the persecution of his clan and sets out to assassinate the king that he discovers to be Uriris. Kenny fails and Rod begs his brother to kill Kenny, but instead Uri forgives his assailant, apologizes for the crimes committed against his clan, and invites him to join the first interior squad. During this time, Kenny joins a group of followers who worship the Founding Titan, and Kenny becomes jealous of the peace that Uri possesses and begins to covet the Founding Titan's powers. Marley then begins to covet the resources under Paradise Island and prepares to train Eldian children to become inheritors of seven of the eight Titans, promising full citizenship to the Eldian and their family upon completion of their training. After learning of this from Kruger, Grisha forces Zeke to try out, but Zeke is not strong enough and begins to fail, causing disappointment. He questions the Eldian Restorationists, but Grisha, in an attempt to disindoctrinate his son of Marleyan propaganda, begins to force Eldian dogma onto his son, which puts him into a tougher spot. Hearing of the Marleyan Public Security Agency's advances and finding the Eldian Restorationists, Zeke attempts to get his parents to quit, but they refuse. Terrified, Zeke confides in Tom Xarver, who recommends telling the authorities. To save his own skin and the skin of his grandparents, Zeke makes the hard choice of turning his parents in, which earns him the trust of the Marleyan and government who name him the next heir to the Beast Titan. Grisha and Dina are taken to paradise where their comrades are all turned into pure titans. Last of all, Dina is turned into a pure titan and Grisha is forced to watch. However, before Grisha can be turned, Kruger turns into the attack titan and routes the Marleyan forces there and transfers the mission to reclaim the founder, as well as ownership of the attack titan, to Grisha, who takes it with him to Walmaria, choosing to live in the Shiganshina district. During this time, Keith Shaddis is named the 12th commander of the Survey Corps. His reputation begins to enter freefall with each failure. He refuses to listen to Erwin Smith, who clearly knows what he's doing. An epidemic hits Shiganshina, Grisha is credited with being the one to solve the problem, and he treats Carla, a woman who would later become his wife. Aaron Yeager is soon born. 837 to 844. Grisha comes to learn that the Arise family are the true royals of the walls and that they possess the founding titan. He discovers the chapel where the Arise family gather early but refuses to enter it, scared of losing his family a second time. Frida Reese inherits the founding titan from her uncle, Uri, and Zeke inherits the beast titan from Tom Xarver. Zeke keeps Tom's corrective lenses, opting to wear them himself as a memento to a father figure he respected as much as he ever did Grisha. Zeke also recalls his plan he and Tom came up with to passively euthanize the Eldian people by removing their ability to reproduce. At this time, other titans are chosen from the warrior unit. These titans are Reiner Braun, who, for his unwavering faith in Marley, is given access to the armored titan. Bertholdt Hoover, who for his controlled and intelligent nature is given access to the Colossal Titan. Annie Leonhardt, who for her deadly and adaptive nature is given access to the female Titan. Marcel Galliard, who is chosen to be the Jaw Titan after taking his brother down to give Reiner a chance. And Piek Finger, who for her intelligent, resourceful, and meekly enduring nature is chosen to be the user of the Cart Titan. The group is groomed to go to Paradise for their mission to reclaim the Founder. They prove themselves on the field of battle. 
Annie also mentions that at this time, upon learning how adaptable the female Titan is, they force her to eat the most obscene things to bolster her power. During this time, as they enjoy their parade in Marley, Reiner gets to meet his father and is disappointed when the man wants nothing to do with him, crushing Reiner's hopes of making his family whole again. Levi at this time would be asked to join the Survey Corps and would accept. Mikasa Ackerman and her family live peacefully in a small cabin in the middle of nowhere. It's then that human traffickers locate them and kill both her father and mother, leaving only Mikasa alive. It just so happens that this is the day that Dr. Grisha Jaeger was scheduled to visit their home. Upon finding the bodies, Grisha demands that his son, Eren, stay put. Eren does not do as asked and ends up locating the traffickers. He plays on their sympathy and causes them to let their guard down and he kills two of the three. He commands Mikasa to fight. Mikasa awakens her Ackerman blood and stabs the man in the heart from the back. Grisha angrily scolds Eren for what he's done, but Eren fires back saying that if they had done nothing, Mikasa would have died. Eren then notices that Mikasa's cold and wraps a scarf around her, giving her the treasure she would hold on to for the rest of her life. Mikasa is then adopted by the Jaeger family where Eren, Mikasa, and Armin all meet for the first time. At some point, Armin's parents attempt to go over the walls in an air balloon but are caught and killed by military police. Zeke, meanwhile, discovers that he is capable of turning other Eldians into titans with his spinal fluid, and then is capable of controlling them with his roar in a manner described only by the Marleans as founder-like. They wonder what his secret is, but only Zeke realizes that it's because he is secretly a pure-blooded royal from his mother's side, 845 to 850. Erwin Smith takes the role of the 13th Regiment Leader of the Survey Corps. The warriors land on Paradise Island. Marcel is eaten when Amir finds him. Reiner takes command and continues the operation in the face of everyone wanting to quit. Eren picks firewood with Mikasa and dreams of becoming a scout. They protect Armin from bullies who shows them a book about the outside world. Bertolt transforms into the Colossal Titan and kicks the walls in, letting Titans in to eat the citizens of Shiganshina, including Carla Jaeger, which spurs Eren to make an oath to kill all Titans. Reiner uses the armored Titan to punch a hole in Wall Maria, compromising the entire wall. Grisha finally confronts the Reese family, however, he cannot bring himself to kill them. Future Eren spurs him on, though, and forces him to slaughter everyone except for Rod. Grisha claims the founding Titan. He then returns to Wall Rose and ventures to the refugee camp and takes Eren to the side, gives him the key to the basement, and then transfers the attack titan to him. Rod Reese would then find Alma, the mother of his illegitimate daughter Historia, and kills her in an attempt to reclaim his daughter and further his bloodline. She ends up taking the name Christina Lenz and joining the Cadet Corps. She would meet Amir, who would become her closest friend. A year after the fall of Shiganshina, the government sends the excess refugees to recapture Wall Maria, a suicide mission in which Armin's grandfather is killed. Eren, Mikasa, and Armin join the 104th Cadet Corps and begin training. Zeke discovers that he can create Titans by injecting them with his spinal fluid. 850. The 104th Cadet Corps are stationed in Trust, where everything is peaceful until the Colossal Titan appears again. This Titan kicks in the wall, but the armored Titan fails to break through Wall Rose. The battle becomes desperate to keep Titans out of Wall Rose. During this battle, Eren is eaten but eventually realizes that he can turn into a Titan and uses this power to win the day by sealing up the wall with a boulder. The people within the walls are understandably wary of Eren and a military tribunal is called to determine his fate. Eren is spared by the tribunal when Levi Ackerman promises to take responsibility for him. Eren begins training and study in his powers and in Titans in general but the two of his study titans, Sonny and Bean, are killed by the warrior unit. Erwin asks Eren the all-important question of who do you think the true enemy is, insinuating that it is humans all along that are trying to destroy everyone. The scout regiment attempt to return to Shiganshina to discover what could be within the basement that Eren's father so desperately wanted Eren to see. They ride toward the district, but are attacked by the female titan, which they lure into the forest and trap. However, the female titan summons titans to eat her, and her shifter escapes through the fray. She reassumes titan form and kills Levi's squad, forcing Eren into confrontation with her, where she unapologetically kicks his ass and attempts to kidnap him. However, Mikasa and Levi chase her down and manage to rescue Eren. The scouts then attempt to flee back to Wall Rose, where they're chased down by titans. However, they escape. Despite the loss, the scouts discover who is truly behind this and lure Annie Leonhardt into a trap in the Stohes district of Walsina, where she's defeated by Eren. She encapsulates herself into a crystal made of hardened titan flesh to survive. The scouts learn nothing from Annie this way, and Erwin, despite the casualties in Stohes, manages to garner approval from the nobles. They also learn that there are titans inside the walls. 
However, the battle isn't over as the Beast Titan and Cart Titan make their appearances in Shiganshina for the first time, where they proceed to make their way into Wall Rose. The Beast Titan proceeds to have everyone in Ragako Village turned into pure Titans and begins leading an assault from there. The 104th Cadet Corps are informed of this and are quickly pulled out of their leave and forced back onto the field to help deal with this crisis. They go to differing villages to warn them of the threat, all while attempting to find where in the wall there had been a breach. Despite riding for as long as they had, there was no breach detectable. At around this time, Zeke discovers ODM gear and finds it to be a novel idea, sending its specs back to Marley. The scouts then flee to a castle to wait out the night. There, they seek out resources and find cans upon cans of Marley and food, which Reiner discovers that Amir can read. Castle Utgard is then converged upon by the Beast Titan and the Pure Titans. This leaves Reiner and Berthold startled, particularly when they're asked why they're so surprised, saying it looks like they just saw a living legend. Zeke makes his way to the top of the wall. Castle Utgard falls, but before everyone can be killed, Amir turns into the Jaw Titan to protect the others, and nearly perishes until the rest of the Scout Regiment arrives. They take Amir to Wall Rose for medical treatment. However, upon making it there, Reiner and Bertholdt take Aaron to the side, where Reiner spills the beans that he and Bertholdt are the Armored and Colossal Titans, respectively, startling Aaron. Mikasa tries to kill them, but Reiner and Bertholdt transform and take Aaron. Reiner, as the Armored Titan, grips Aaron and slides down the walls, while the Colossal Titan swallows Amir and holds off the scouts from atop the wall. Reiner hits the ground, but Aaron transforms. It's a one-sided battle until Aaron remembers how to use joint locks, which begin to shatter the Armored Titan's armor. When it looks like Aaron might win, Reiner pushes Aaron under Bertholdt and cries out for him to fall. Bertholdt then falls off the side of the wall and lands on top of them, giving Reiner the opening he needs to escape with Aaron. The scouts get their horses and quickly give chase. They chase the armored titan back to Wall Maria's interior, but quickly find themselves caught up to by the scouts. They continue to run, but Erwin daringly breaks off and lures pure titans behind toward the armored titan. This ends up with Eren breaking free, but results in Hannes' death at the hands of the Smiling Titan. Eren makes contact with Dina Fritz and then summons the full power of the Founding Titan, which he then uses to command the other Titans to attack Reiner and Bertholdt and to kill the Smiling Titan. They then make their way back to Wall Rose. Reiner and Berthold free with Amir back to Shiganshina when they send Amir back to Marley to have her stripped of her Titan. After returning to Wall Rose, they discuss the Titans in the walls and how Titans seem to be humans turned into monsters as shown in Ragako Village, where they discover that the remaining pure Titan was Connie's mother. Thereafter, Eren and what remains of the 104th Cadet Corps are transferred and serve under Levi. However, it's discovered that the government is now against them for learning too much about Titans and the Walls. They attempt to capture Squad Levi, but Squad Levi escapes. Demo Reeves is discovered to be in cahoots with the military police, and Kenny Ackerman and his squad of interior police are sent to kill him and take Astoria and Eren. This succeeds. Erwin, Dot Pixis, and Commander-in-Chief Zachary plot to overthrow the government, discovering that the current king is a sham and that the Reese family has been manipulating everyone, hiding information about the Walls. They plan to bring down the treasonous Reese family and replace them with Historia. They locate the Reese family at the chapel and attempt to break in. They're met with Kenny Ackerman, who betrays Rod Reese and attempts to free Eren, allowing him to turn into a Titan. However, Eren refuses, believing that it's his fault that all of this happened, and surrenders to Historia so that she can eat him. Historia refuses and shatters the syringe of Titan fluid. Rod Reese, however, won't let this slide and ingests the Titan fluid and becomes a massive aberrant Titan known as the King of the Walls. The scouts come together to defeat him before he can level the Orva district. Eren and the scouts gather gunpowder to blow it apart. The Titan makes it to the walls where it's discovered that the ground it had been dragging itself over had worn away its face, leaving its mouth wide open for Eren to throw the gunpowder in. The Titan detonates, sending chunks flying everywhere. However, Rod is still alive and Astoria must find the chunk he's in to kill him. She locates the chunk and slices it, killing her father. She then claims her right to the throne and becomes queen. After this, the group is allowed to rest for a while as they prepare to return to Shiganshina. After a nice celebratory party, they march to Shiganshina where Reiner is found hiding in the walls. Eren seals one wall of Shiganshina, but it's discovered to be a trap and the Beast Titan has them boxed in with his pure titans. After Eren engages in combat with Reiner and Reiner is defeated, he lets out a roar and Bertholdt is thrown into the district where he transformed into the Colossal Titan. Together they fight against the Titans and against Bertholdt, but things look bad. Erwin knows he needs to bring down the Beast Titan, so he orders Levi to kill Zeke while Erwin and his squad distract him. 
Erwin's squad rushes toward the Beast Titan and are destroyed, one and all, save for Flock. Levi manages to cut down the Titans, but fails to kill Zeke. At this time, Reiner is beaten a second time by Mikasa, and Bertholdt is defeated by Eren and Armin, though Armin is left mortally wounded. It's then revealed that Erwin also survived, but is mortally wounded as well. It's then up to Levi to decide whether to revive Erwin or Armin, and in the end, after Erwin seems to refuse his decision, Levi revives Armin and feeds him Bertholdt, turning Armin into the Colossal Titan. They end up going into the basement and discovering that there really is a civilization beyond the sea and that they're very racist. After this, Eren and Mikasa are thrown in the brig for attacking Levi over his decision to revive Erwin, a decision he revoked soon after. They're then let out of the brig and given medals by Astoria. After kissing her hand, Eren witnesses the future and is scarred for life. 851 to 854. Anti-Marley and soldiers board ships to paradise, and Eren changes visibly to his friends, becoming darker. The Anti-Marleyans bring technology and knowledge to the island and help update infrastructure. Historia gets pregnant at some point. They also convince the leadership to meet with the Azumabitos of Hizuru who offer aid to them in exchange for resources. Eren and the scouts board a ship headed for Marley. While there, they encounter refugees from the Mideast War and have a grand old time as Eren struggles with his decisions that he'll make. After attending a meeting in which Marley plans to declare war on Paradise, Eren steals his resolve. He disappears and ends up infiltrating Marley once more as a wounded veteran from the war named Kruger. During the Mideast War, the warriors acknowledge their failure on Paradise and state that if it hadn't been for that, the Mideast War would not have happened. Reiner drops into Fort Slava to make way for Zeke to sink the Mideast Alliance's fleet, which he successfully does, marking the end of the war. The Tiber family then invites the world to the Liberio internment camp where Willy Tiber reveals the truth of the Great Titan War and Carl Fritz's vow to the world. He villainizes Eren by stating that Eren can circumvent the vow. Eren, meanwhile, is watching this and meets secretly with Reiner who begs for mercy and receives none. Eren destroys much of Liberio as Armin destroys Marley's fleets at the wharf. Eren manages to eat the Warhammer and capture Zeke. Sasha Browse sadly dies, and Falco and Gabby are captured. Eren is detained, as is Zeke, but the anti marleyan group known as the Jaegerists take over Paradise and make way for Eren and Zeke to make contact and complete their planned genocide. The warrior unit appears in Shiganshina, where Eren and Reiner are primed for their rematch. Zeke shows up and begins to aid him, but fakes his death when his titan is killed. Eren mortally wounds Porco, who is then eaten by Falco Grice. Eren runs for Zeke, but has his head blown off by Gabby, and in the upset of the century, Zeke catches that baseball like a true champ. In that moment, both are transported to the paths, where Zeke attempts to convince Eren, who has shown his true colors, to rejoin him. Eren doesn't and takes command, bringing out the founding titan and beginning the rumbling. The scouts can do nothing and Flock then takes command, offering Jean a place in the island's leadership, but Jean helps the warriors escape alongside the other scouts who have decided to fight Eren. They reach the port and free the Azumabitos and take their seaplane out to find Eren. After failing to convince him to stop, they decide to take him down by any means necessary. They drop in on him but are faced by a horde of the previous generations of Titans, including Tom Ksarver, Grisha Jaeger, Eren Kruger, and Berthold Hoover. Armin ends up swallowed by a titan and goes to the paths where he convinces Zeke to rebel against Eren. In response, Zeke allows Levi to cut off his head and Armin uses his colossal titan to destroy the founder's body. However, Eren turns into a colossal titan himself and begins to fight Armin. Armin punches a hole in Eren's teeth and Mikasa proceeds to enter the mouth. She finds the real Eren's head and kills him, ending the founding titan and the threat of the titans forever by finally freeing Amir from her millennia-long slavery to obsessive love. The battle ends and over 80% of the world's population is killed by Eren. Historia has her baby. Marley and the world begin to seek peace with Eldia, but the Jaegerists are still in power. Mikasa buries Eren's head by their favorite tree, where she had been sleeping during the first episode and chapter. 857. The scouts, under Historia Reese, become ambassadors to the world and to Paradise, who ask them to mediate peace talks between the two factions, which apparently goes quite well for quite some time. The future and beyond. The scouts are allowed to return to paradise as they need, where they visit Eren's grave often. Mikasa eventually dies of old age, still wrapped in Eren's scarf. But despite Eren's hopes that this would deter war, war still returns, and the world is once more turned into a wasteland. During this time, a young child and their dog make their way to paradise where they find a massive tree not too unlike the one Amir had found thousands of years earlier. 
This tree is the same one that Aaron's head was buried under. The child enters the cave, and the story ends. Such a bittersweet ending but what a ride it was. While our world may not have been subject to the rumbling the way Marley was, to say that Titans didn't sweep over our planet would be a lie. The anime may now rank as one of my favorite of all time, in the top five at least, but if you're still craving more Attack on Titan, you could always try Junior High. I hear it's hilarious, but uh, if that's not so much your speed and you want a canon story set with the original Attack on Titan world, well, relief may just be around the corner. It was stated that Attack on Titan will receive a new chapter to commemorate the release of a new art book sometime in 2024, so look forward to that. Heck, maybe we'll have to update our timeline to accommodate it. <laughs> Ooh. Well, anyway, tell us in the comments what your favorite moment was in Attack on Titan. For me, I really liked the Raid on Liberia arc. While not as grand as some of the previous or following arcs, I loved it because it was the first time we ever got to see the Warhammer Titan. And on top of that, we got to see Eren's attack titan slightly evolve. The longer hair and glazed eyes on top of the even more ruthless personality was... Whew, compliments to the chef. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to ring that bell to be notified about our latest videos as they drop. And in case you somehow forgot, Frederator loves you.